be able to, you know, hear us. And then also, um, this is um, recorded. So we will post this and so that anyone that wants to listen can listen. So I wanted to, I left my notes at home, but I think I can remember. Um, <laughs> I want to talk to you about, so last week, week before last, everybody, the industry was all up in roar about Style Me Pretty, you know, closing down. Yes. And a literal shutdown, meaning that, you know, no one else is going to buy them. The site wasn't going to stay live. Like all of the information was going to be gone. So that meant that all of those people that had been featured, would style me pretty or had some type of presence um, in their um, social media world was going to lose all of that information. And so I, I read your article and I saw um, the things that you had written in there and I thought it was very key and very important that, um, hello, if you're joining, if you can please uh, mute your phones. Thank you. We just had some people to join. Yeah. I thought it was very important um, that we bring this to light, not only just about Style Me Pretty, but also in reference to us, you know, um, sharing our <laughs> creative work with other publications out there. And if something like this was to happen again, how can we prepare ourselves so that, you know, the traffic or the SEO out there that are we losing it or are we not losing it? So I guess if we can just start with, hello, if you're there, uh, if you can mute your phone. Okay, you have to mute your phone. Okay. Um, so if you can kind of go over and start there as far as, you know, how the the domino effect starts when a publication decides that they're going to shut down and um, mm -hmm. the individual business work has been lost. Right, okay. All right, so in the world of the web, there's your world, meaning your website, and then there's everything else, meaning social media, other websites like Style Me Pretty and all these other wedding professional blogs that are out there. Um, and People need to know that in the world of the web, yes, it's great to drop your seeds everywhere. I mean, you have a, a solid social media platform. You're featured on a lot of different websites. You're advertising with Style Me Pretty or whoever it is for affiliate links or like um, any type of promotions you're doing. That's all good. But um, here's the reality of the situation. I want to make sure everybody can. I just want to make sure everybody could hear me because Trina is on the screen right now. So um, the reality of the situation is, you own your website and you're renting from everywhere else. So I guess the moral of the story comes down to it's all good about placing content on these other platforms, but just know that your home is your website. So I've been seeing a lot of people write content about Style Me Pretty. And by the way, from what I've heard, somebody, there's some investors or people trying to save it right now. So the, the lowdown is it may not be going away in its entirety. Um, but the first initial, um, what, what the notification they gave everyone was uh, April 11th. That's the last time we're going to actually publicly curate any new content. And then April 30th, it's going down, meaning that if you go to www, found me pretty, it will be no longer. So who knows what's going to happen? I guess we've got to stay tuned for that. But in the event, what happened, I noticed a lot of people were writing things about, is it going to affect their SEO? But they were writing it from the standpoint of the content that was on Style Me Pretty's site, not so much about what's on their site. Because I've seen a lot of professionals do this where they'll write a blog on their site talking about, I've been featured in Style Me Pretty. And then they would have the link to the, to the actual post or whatever Style Me Pretty had on their site um, showing their work, which is all good because in the whole world of the World Wide Web, that's why they call it a web, you're trying to make all these connections and weave people and things together. And you're doing that by linking. Um, so the lowdown when it comes to Style Me Pretty or anytime you put content on an external site, like other than yours, um, there's, it's called an external link. 
That's basically what it's called, meaning that it's going outside of your website. And from that, the power of SEO comes into play when you actually consider that they'll, if they actually have a link going back to you, meaning that they actually say on their website, www.mybusiness.com, then that's considered a backlink, which is supposed to be something that helps in SEO. Um, but there's some, some nuances with that too. There's some compli it gets a little complicated because in the world of SEO with backlinks, there's uh, two types of different backlinks. There's a no follow backlink and there's a follow backlink. So if it's no follow, that means that that website, say for example, Stami Pretty, is basically acting like a politician saying that they do not endorse this message or they do not support this message. They're basically not giving you any SEO ranking. But then if they actually have on the back end hidden saying follow, they're basically saying they approve this message. They approve that they want to give you some kind of credit. So therefore they're giving you rank. So that's a whole other nuance. Um, when it comes to blogging sites and all of these sites that are having you pay for marketing, whether it's a, li a listing or ads, a lot of times you're actually no follow anyway, so you're not even getting cred, um, but some of them have loopholes and nuances, so, so that's that. But for all intents and purposes for this, I think it's important for people to know how to handle their home when it comes to anything that's outside of their home. So like anytime you have a link to Instagram, to Facebook, to Style Me Pretty, wherever it is, you need to know that that's basically you giving cred to this other site. That's an external link. So the article that I wrote was actually responding to that nuance because I knew a lot of people were texting me and emailing me like, oh my gosh, okay, my content might be lost on Style Me Pretty, but what about if I featured a blog on my own site talking about how I was featured in Style Me Pretty and I linked to them and I was like, yeah, that then would cause a bad effect when it comes to SEO. So I had a whole five-step process of what to do in order to protect yourself um, from getting affected by SEO or having a, a negative drawback from Google. Okay. And as far as people are saying, oh, let me copy my pictures, this and the <laughs> other, you know, what was that going to help them to do? What type of uh, situation, what are they trying to um, put a Band-Aid on? Got it. Okay. So in this day and age, as you know, Tara, like content is like the new currency. Um, so everybody's all about content, whether it's a podcast or a course or a PDF, whatever it is, but content is your currency. So the fact that you have content out there that's not serving you um, is why everybody was like, oh my gosh, I got to grab all my images. And a lot of times, you know, what mostly happened was people would say, for example, you were featured on Style Me Pretty, they would post about it on Instagram, like, oh, I've been featured on Style Me Pretty, but there's no cred back to their website really for that. I mean, they're hoping that hopefully people will just discover them from the post and then hopefully come to their website to learn more about their services, but there was no real connection. So the whole point of copying all of the content that was on Style Me Pretty that's gonna go down in the images was so that you can actually take that information and hopefully be able to one, send it somewhere else to be featured, or two, use it for your own content and put it in your home. So that was why everybody was saying copy it. And that's why, and even with me, I said take screenshots of it because even that's a visual that you can actually use as currency. I said copy the content, copy the images, um, so you have it just for record. And then again, if you wanted to submit to another blog, you have the ability to do that. I know a lot of blogs right now are opening up the doors to say, we'll take your content, so um, right. I know there's a thing on that. Yes, um, one of our local um, bloggers uh, united with love there. I think they're going back uh, two or three years or something that they will take um, Your features and feature them on their particular site. Exactly. Okay, so with that in mind um, How do we prevent this from happening again? Are, are people um, Relying too much on putting their eggs all in one basket you know, how do we prevent this from happening again? Not that we can control whenever our publication goes out of business, but how can we, um, I guess, lessen the frenzy of, you know, your heart and your business? Right. Um, I think the biggest lesson and the biggest way to eliminate the frenzy 
is to, it's one of those, like, it's almost like coming back to home base. It's like in the world of the web, which has allowed for us to have so much outreach and so much connection via other platforms, I think it comes down to owning your own space again. Um, and again, if currency is, the, is con if content is a new currency, it's like, why not place that content and that currency on your site? Because I see a lot of people who will, you know, post amazing stuff on Instagram, amazing stuff on Facebook, but have, they have no reference, there is no reference back to their website or it's no pointing back to their website or bringing it back to the point where someone would come. And the whole goal of all of this stuff is to convert. Now, granted, and I know like a lot of people are doing business on Instagram. They're getting leads that way. They're getting DMs. Same thing with Facebook. But you have the most control, actually, and authority from your own website. So I think that's what I, the most important lesson is. It's almost like, yes, you have to diversify. And yes, you have to sprinkle your seeds on all these platforms. But at the, in the, end, at the end of the day, where you actually can make the most impact and convert isn't at your home and so that's what i think it comes down to it's like so if you are going to blog or if you're going to be featured on a blog make sure that you're also blogging that content on your site and if you are going to do it instead of continually referencing sami pretty sami pretty or whoever it is make sure that you're keeping it maybe one link and then everything else is all about you on okay. your site okay because I know whenever I, I notice whenever I do my blogs and you go down to the very bottom and it's telling you, you know, um, the meta stuff that's at the bottom. And it's always telling me that you're not referencing back to your own website. There's not a link to link back into your website. So is that what you're primarily saying that whenever you write blogs, you know, to make sure that your blog is redirecting back to your website? Yes. So that, so we talked about external links. Then there's a whole concept of internal links. So internal links are the links that actually keep people in your house. So for example, if you're if someone's on your homepage and then you have on your homepage, click here for more or learn more, that learn more is an internal link going to another page on your site. So you have the ability in blogs to be able to reference other blogs or other pages in your website, if that makes sense. So yes, to answer your question, that is part of it. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, I think, like I said, the moral of the story is it's almost like you have to always think, where am I the most secure with my content? And the honest truth is on your website, because unless you don't pay your hosting um, or your, you know, whoever it is, then your site will hopefully stay up as long as the World Wide Web is alive. So as best as almost as if when, once you get featured with that particular publication, then maybe to write a blog about whatever you got featured on so that, you know, that information is staying, as you say, within your house. Right. Now, there are some caveats to that because I know sometimes with some of these bloggers, they actually say that you cannot do that. Mm -hmm. okay? so, and I know, I think Sami Pretty had a time frame when they were actually saying, you know, if you submitted this, that it can only be here because they wanted to keep the exclusivity of the, the content. Um, so that's one thing you might have to just make sure when you are putting your content out in all these other places that you're not stepping on their toes or breaching any contract or whatever agreement you have. But with this, in terms of Stami Pretty, specifically now, even if they stay alive, um, I think it would be smart and in your best interest to make sure if that is the case and you were featured, to definitely take everything uh, on whatever date, whatever you want to say, reference the wedding, I was featured on Style Me Pretty, and still reference it because, believe it or not, Style Me Pretty is still in the world of wedding, is a relevant keyword, so it's still a good word to hold on to as far as putting it in your content. You don't necessarily have to have a link, though. That's the thing. So you're not going to have a link going back there, but you could at least mention it in your copy. Okay. And the $20 million question, with the closing of Style Me Pretty, did it affect the uh, individual's SEO? Yes. Well, I'll say this. Yes and no. So again, it comes down to this. If you, if that was like your only bread and butter, like say, for example, if that was the only platform that you said I'm going to invest in and I'm going to do, um, then then it would affect you. 
Um, if you had other sources, it may not affect you as much. Um, if you actually have, and I'll say this now, if you still have right now links pointing to Stami Pretty, like even the badge that you know how you could say like as featured in on your homepage or wherever or press and you have the Stami Pretty badge and then it links out to their site. If the site goes down, Google's going to look at that as a broken link. So you need to change that and take that link off of your site. So that will affect you. Oh, good to know, because I still have, because Borrowed in Blue, so this is the second um, publication that has closed down. I still have my little badge on my website. Yeah. So you need to take it. Although Borrowed in Blue is coming up. Back. Yeah, you can keep the image up, mm -hmm. but, if they're, yeah, but, to say, but if the link is broken um, and it's not going anywhere, then you should take the link, the hyperlink off. Take the hyperlink off. Okay, awesome. You can still keep the badge, but erase any hyperlinks. Yeah, because again, like from a from a relevancy factor, Stami Pretty people knowing that you are featured on Stami Pretty still has pull some rank from a bride's perspective and a wedding professional standpoint. Like they're still looking at you like, oh, you've been featured on Stami Pretty. So to have the visual, it's all good. Okay. Um, to have the word, all good. It's just the link, especially if the site goes down, that's not good. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, so. Um, we have a question. Um, the question is, so basically, if you're not using borrowed land, you're fine. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Like I said, my whole, one of my, my Myrna-isms, I could say, is you got to own, don't rent. And like, so it's literally, it comes down to that, you know, and, and know if you are renting that they can kick you out at any time, just like this. So, you know, just be ready. Without notice. <laughs> Without notice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I would say that um, I know there are a lot of people that do not blog. Um, is that hurting people if, because they're not blogging? Yeah, here's, here's the thing about blogging um, and the reason why it became a thing. Because back in the day, websites were just informational. They were literally just an extension of your business card somewhere else that somebody could find you. In today's age, again, content is the new social, like it's, it's now the new currency. So with that being said, if you are adding, and they call it dynamic content, if you're constantly updating and providing new and relevant information and content, then that is building up your relevancy factor in the world of the web, and that's why people are blogging. So instead of having a static homepage, about page, contact page, you know, those, those are the things that you've re you rarely change. The blog, in essence, would be that dynamic change that would be actually including and incorporating new and relevant topics, then it deems you as relevant and then they will heighten up or elevate your ranking. Because Google's all about relevancy. I mean, they're all about, is my formula, my, my DMO formula is good content, quality content, relevancy, so how much you are in the conversation, and then frequency, how many times you're being brought up in that conversation. So it's all about that. Okay. And then once um, someone writes a blog, if you're featuring other companies or other businesses, especially, you know, you're featuring your vendor partners in there, is it important to reach out to them to maybe tag you back with that particular blog? Does that help your SEO? So yeah, so the whole world of external and internal links. So external links, meaning that anything that points out of your site, if it's a very credible site, it does elevate your, your algorithm factor when it comes to ranking. Um, so say for example, if I wrote something and I pointed out to CNN and referred something from CNN, and then CNN happened to catch that and actually refer back to me, then that then will heighten you, yes. Um, so it's all about, like if you think of the web as literally like spider web and you're trying to make all these cross references together, the more you weave, together, the more relevant you, you seem, and therefore your ranking will go up, so. Okay. But I would say don't go crazy with it. Like, it's not like you should write a blog and just reference a whole bunch of shout outs to such and such and such and such, like, we not, don't have to go crazy right, with right. it. It still has still to be. make it relevant for what it is that you're writing. Exactly, about. so, and the same thing is when you think about Instagram, when you're hashtagging, yes, they say 30, but Instagram wants to now crack down on that. They're just like, you know what? Um, if you're putting all your hashtags in the com in the cat in the comment, um, they're they're actually starting to track that to see 
if that's actually working or if that's making it seem as if people are just stuffing, as they call it, um, and they're actually trying to see if there are people using more relevant hashtags, like in the actual caption, and they're helping to elevate that. So, I mean, it's a whole, you know, you kind of have to be very strategic, and but you can do it, and it does help, as long as it's within reason and actually okay. really relevant. All right. Any other questions for those that have joined us? Questions, questions? If not, I'll tell you. So the, the one big thing that I think people will do, because I think a lot of people got the memo of owning their content. I think a lot of people got the memo of, All right, let me see real quick how many times I referenced Tell Me Pretty on my site because as a URL. And so you can clean that up. But the last step that I feel like a lot of people miss is, because everybody knows about Google Analytics for the most part. But a lot of people don't necessarily know about this whole other side called Webmaster Tools, Google Search Console, um, which is another, it, it's, it's more website development uh, friendly, but so a lot of developers use it. But you can also just log in and basically the goal is to verify that you own this website. So for example, for you, Tara, Perfect Planning, you know, you have to have Perfect Planning by Tara. You have to have that as, uh, as an ownership scenario under Google Search Console. And then in Google Search Console, it allows for you to do two things. It allows for you to update and upload a sitemap, which is like the table of contents of your website. And it also allows for you to test and upload a robots.txt file, which the robots.txt file is the file that allows for the, the robots, the bots, to index your site and to scan your site. So the last step that I would say everyone needs to do is once they remove all those links of Style Me Pretty on their site, they need to then upload a new sitemap to Google Search Console to let Google know that the problem has been fixed and that they can index and scan your site without these links. So that's, that's like the last one. Is this something an individual can do, or do they have to hire somebody like you to do this? <laughs> I know, they, they can do it, um, and that's the thing. I do have I do have instructions on how to do it that are very okay. easy. Um, okay. So yes, but they can do it, but they can also hire someone as well. All right, all right. Well, I'm pretty sure the group would be happy if you could share those instructions. So if you email them to me, I'll put it out there to the group so that they can uh, have it and go in there. Um, I really wanted to have you on here. I don't really think, because we're doing this in the African American Hispanic uh, Facebook group, I don't think that the Style Me Pretty affected a lot of us. Um, and forgive me if I'm wrong, but I don't think it affected too many of us. But um, in this world, in this day and age, you never know what can happen. And so I wanted you to address the issue about Style Me Pretty because it may be, you know, another publication out there that goes down whether it's um, a United with Love, or Grace Armand, or Brides.com, whomever. I just wanted, you know, our audience to be prepared and know what it is that they need to be doing in their own wheelhouse to kind of, you know, keep the traffic going to them and to um, know what it is that they need to do to, in the case that something like this happens. Yeah. No, I think it's good. I think it's, you know, everything's a lesson. I mean, I, like I said last week or whatever that was when the, the, the word got out, it was just mayhem and frenzy. Yeah. Um, but, and it, it's was also, very, it was a very, very chaotic. I saw some posts and people were yeah. about to lose their minds. Yeah. And it's scary because you think about, I mean, I was, I was there when Sami Pretty first started and to see them from when they started at its inception to now to see like how much they've blown and how much they've grown and then to see it just say okay we're done <laughs> you know is, is kind of you know it's a big deal um so the whole other side of the story is you know when you have public investors come in things can change <laughs> you know that's the whole other lesson of things that you learn from this stuff but yeah but from a technology standpoint it's it comes down to you know own don't rent and if you do rent, just know you need to have a backup plan. All right. Have a backup plan. Then. Okay. Last chance. Any questions? We only had one question from the group. Have quite a few people on here. I know. I thought I saw Chip on here. Yes, Chip. Mean to tell me you have no questions? <laughs> Chip, do I need to unmute you so that you can speak? 
I know. And now, because he and I could talk about images and video transcribing and images, because if he did have any images or video, um, definitely he would need to get any of that stuff because then he can post it. Yeah, I, think, I think Chip is gone. But okay. we do have one comment that says, renting is so 2012, LLL. Love it. <laughs> I might have to take that. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, everyone, thank you for joining us today. Um, I will post this recording on the Facebook group. So if you need to go back and review anything that Myrna has said here, um, it'll be there for you. And Myrna, if people want to reach out to you for more technical advice or for your services, how can they reach you? So just look up Myrna PD. You'll find me. M-Y-R-N-A-P as in Paul, D as in David. Yes. PD. And Myrna is also in our Facebook group, so I'm sure if you go to our members page, you'll be able to find her there. Yep. Okay, wait a minute. Uh, thank you, Tara. The Google Console search saved me. That's my takeaway for today. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Love it. All right. Love it, love it. You guys, if you have any questions, I'm here. All right. Thank, thank you. you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.